Yo, what is going on? It is Maleki, the Growth and Dividend Growth Investor. Welcome to the channel. It is good to have all of you here. Today, we're going to be talking about my overall portfolio value. We'll be comparing my fiance's uh, Roth IRA, that is ETF focused, compared to my Roth IRA, which is uh, individual stock focus. And then I will be talking about a new strategy that I'm using to increase my income. And without further ado, let's get started. So looking um, at my overall total portfolio value, I have $227,182. I will say that Tesla has not stopped going up. It has been a phenomenal ride up until this point, and it just seems like it will never stop. So basically the majority of these gains are predominantly from Tesla. But with that being said, you know, my index investing, which is my 401k is still, you know, as time's going on, increasing over time. Same with my Roth IRA. You know, it's still increasing over time, which is the most important thing. You know, not everyone will have like a crazy growth account that's exploding. That's totally fine. You know, the most important thing is to do at least something. So even if you're index investing or ETF investing or individual stock picking that are dividend focused, that is totally fine. Those are all appropriate and great ways to build wealth over time. At the end of the day, it's just it's about making money, and that's the most important thing. So, you know, my 401k has increased from the last month that I made the video. Same thing with my Roth IRA. It's also has increased since I made the last video. I did add some money in because it is past January 1st, and I threw in some cash into here. So I bought some shares of some stuff over there. In terms of my growth holdings, Tesla has just been absolutely demolishing the game. On top of Tesla, I have also been starting to purchase NEO, but in this growth holding account, it is in my Fidelity account. And what I'm actually doing is I'm using the uh, amount of Tesla money I have, and I'm using margin to buy NEO to get uh, really good premiums for covered calls. So, you know, my total portfolio value for Tesla is actually like about $122,000, but because I bought NEO at pretty cheap at about $47 per share, it's currently at like 50, it has also increased as well. Looking at the overall monthly net worth, um, you can see that it's been progressively going up, which is a really good sign. In December, I didn't actually add this Robinhood account here that put $16,000. So if you just added $16,000, you know, it would probably be like $177,000. So from $177,000 to $227,000 is pretty huge jump, though. It's like almost $30,000 that it went up or you know, even much more than that. Ooh. Yeah, Tesla's been killing it, but you know, it could be very discouraging when you see someone's account value that's two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars, and you look at your account value and you only have like a thousand bucks in there. It could be discouraging, but what I want to tell you guys is, it doesn't matter. Don't be comparing other people to yourself. At one point, I did have an account that was a thousand dollars, and now because I started four years ago, this is where I'm at right now. This could be you. And I just want to show people that it's very possible to build this over time. Like I didn't just build this over a year. This has been four years of me picking up extra overtime shares. This is years of me being very frugal with my money and things like that. So just kind of going over these couple things. Uh, just a little sidebar for this Robinhood account that I have over here. Um, with this Robinhood account, I'm only using $16,000 I'm not using any of my own money. I will be using margin, but I won't be putting any extra cash. Where in my growth account, in this Fidelity account, I still want to focus on that long-term investing. I still want to keep acquiring more and more Tesla shares. So every single week or every two weeks when I'm getting paid, I'm still putting money in to buy more Tesla. That is still the plan. That is still the play. I am still a long-term investor, whether I'm doing in this fidelity account or this robin hood account my plan is to hold on to these shares for a long time but with my new strategy that i'm using with the covered calls what i want to do is i want to create income from doing something i'm already doing we'll discuss that in the covered call section so two hundred twenty-seven thousand one hundred eighty-two dollars and 87 cents fantastic what i wanted to do is i work as a registered nurse i'm not some i'm not a person who makes an extravagant amount of money. I do pick up overtime when available, but for the most part, I'm just a blue collar worker who puts in my hours and does my work. I'm not like incredibly smart either. Um, 
So I just, I, I'm just like an average guy and you can have this, like an average person is fully capable of doing this. So in terms of what I want to do is with this uh, new covered call option strategy that I'm doing to produce more income, what I want to do is like as a registered nurse, my gross salary per month is $6,000. My take home is more like $4,000 after I get taxed really heavily. So I take about $4,000 home every month. So what I wanted to show with how much money I'm harvesting from option premium or from these covered calls is can I actually make as much money with the option calls that I do as my regular job? I would be very happy if that was the case. So I just wanted to show, have this number just kind of right in the front and see if I can possibly hit that for any of the months. For the December month over here, I have $2,569 that has been um, invested, or I guess that's how much I made from the option premium. And that's only been like two, about two weeks worth of option premium. So it's not a realistic indicator of how much I really made in the month of December. The key to look at is going to be the month of January. So when I make my next video, we'll see how much I actually harvest from the premium. Okay. And looking at the overall amount of money, like 70% of my money is actually like in growth holdings and the other 30% is in index investing and then dividend investing. So, you know, these are the two that a lot of people like to do. I love, even though I am growth investing here, I love the idea of dividends being paid out to you. So in the near future, when I feel Tesla has made me all the money in the world, I may have to switch over this Tesla and this Neo into more of a dividend focused thing, which is kind of why I have my fiance investing in um, the ETFs that she does. And I'll discuss that when I head over there. But, you know, for the most part, 70% in growth holdings and, you know, 30% in this kind of like safer index investing and dividend growth investing. And to be honest with you guys, I love dividend growth investing. I just love that idea of just checks coming in, you know, either every quarter or so on. And just like, you don't have to do anything. And these companies are making money for you. So I love that idea just because I'm doing all these extra things to increase my value. Now doesn't mean that I'm straying away from the idea of like, that's probably the end goal is just to get all this money and then switch over to more of a dividend investing strategy. So going over to my fiance's um, account, the, the goal here is literally passive income. That is the main goal. My fiance is not the person who's going to crack open her laptop and start reach, researching stocks or picking the best things. She straight up went to me. He's like, Mike, what should I do with this? And if I was someone who wasn't as dedicated to looking things up when, when it comes to stocks and investing and stuff like that, this is the exact thing that I would have. I wouldn't do anything different and I would just leave it exactly how this is. So you know, both of us have the, uh, both, she's also a registered nurse. So she has the exact same 401k here. You know, I started, I started work earlier than she did, which is why I have a lot more money. Like I've been working as a nurse for about, oh man, this is gonna be the fifth year. So yeah, which is about like 10 grand a year. So, you know, she hasn't working, hasn't been working as long as a nurse, which eventually over time, this will increase. So, you know, she's got her index investing. So 2060 Vanguard target retirement fund. And then in the Roth, this is kind of that goes back to that, like I would like to transition to dividend investing. If I actually had my $10 million, this is probably what I'd want to put in. 40% in VYM, 40% in VYMI, 10% in VNQ, and then 10% in VNQI. I want to have 50% international, but then 50% US, and this is the allocation I want. So this is essentially kind of what I want to have. And then in her traditional account, she also has ETS. So she has a total US market, total international market, and then the triple Q, which is like a technology focused ETF. You know, I still want foreign exposure because I believe in the future, it would be very, very wise to be investing more so in growth in the uh, emerging market se sectors, which is why I had VX VXUS and why I actually have her investing in VYMI. VYMI actually pays a good dividend. So let's talk about the monthly income. So I was saying in my last video that I had in December that her dividend yield was about 0.8%. And that wasn't really reflecting exactly what type of yield this had. We did have a monster payment in December, which was $77.41, which bumped her yield up from 0.8 to 2.15%. But that only was in like the last two quarters where she was able to capture this. You know, 
Ideally, this next year, she will hopefully be maxing out this um, Roth IRA, which she will be. Like we have plans that we'll be contributing every single week to put into it. So, you know, this should be $12,000 and we'll actually be able to capture the real dividend yield of what these holdings are. And then just talking about her overall net worth, like $23,253. You know, when comparing like my account to hers account, it is like I said in the earlier in this video, it can be very discouraging for someone who only has like account this small compared to a whopping $227,000. But the point I'm trying to get across is we all have to start somewhere. And at some point you will get to this point, but it's just baby steps. You know, you know, I, I started with $1,000 and look where I'm at now and my fiance is starting and she's going to build this over time. So it's really important that you just start now and you, you know, depend whatever investing style you want to do. The most important thing is the strategy, which is to consistently invest. Like, I don't know how much I beat a dead horse with saying this, but consistently investing is what will build you wealth. Not investing will not create you wealth. So let's go to mine. So again, her focus, ETF focus. My focus in my Roth IRA is actual individual holdings. So in the month of December, I got paid out $55.52. It wasn't the number one payout for a month, but it's the number two. Um, this month in like August or what is it, September it was my highest payout, but then $55 is my second, which I'm going to take. Um, so go over my portfolio. I switched my portfolio a million different times. By the end of this year, I got a 3% dividend yield. For someone who's like as young as me, I'm, a, I'm 27 years old, maybe my yield should be a little bit lower, but have a higher growth focus. But the reason why there's this dividend yield is higher is because 20% of my allocation is in a uh, ETF called QILD, which sells covered calls off the NASDAQ 100, which basically bumps us up pretty high. If I took that out, I'm sure my dividend yield would be like closer to like 2%. But 3% dividend yield, I got paid out $364 worth of income. So basically I did like this divide by this and that gives me, give me, gives me this 3% dividend yield. So again, slow and steady wins the race. I like all these numbers. I like that I got paid all this out. But the most important thing is that, you know, if December of 2021, I better see this much higher. So I better see a nice, beautiful uptrend going this way. And that's that's our end goal as dividend investors is to see this dividend income increasing over time. The next thing we'll talk about is the actual Roth IRA. I'm not going to be going over all these crazy specifics, but, you know, I put in a little bit of money here. I put in about $900 this last week when I got paid because it was the first of the week and I had some extra money laying around. So I, I tossed it into this Roth IRA. Um, so, you know, this is the market gain. Total amount of dividends paid was $447. And again, you know, we got a nice uptrend going. It goes up, it goes down, but ultimately over time, it will go up. There's all these times that it went down but you know what the key here is that you know the the economy is recovering you're picking good plays and we are getting that dividend income and that just captures all these little downs and ups and ultimately it is going up so overall i'm not going to be going over each different little pie if you want to see everything that i own i am linking in my, all my different sectors um, in the description so if you guys want to look at this actual entire pie i have it in my description also, going over the thing, um, my real estate is still being absolutely spanked, absolutely spanked. Wow, negative fifty nine bucks. It will, it will fix itself. It will recover, and it'll, it's going to be fine. That's what long term investors do. We weather the storm. Um, this is that covered call ETF that I own. Like I don't have to personally do the covered calls myself, but I own this. And what this does, it does those covered calls for me. If I can actually master the covered call strategy myself, I may just get rid of this and put whatever money I have in here and just split it along these other sectors. Um, but the best sector so far has been either utilities or industrial. So these are my top performing sectors off of a percentage. Well, actually over total value would be information technology, but yeah but you know i mean you would not think that utilities would, would be having a, a really good gain but it's a it's a defensive stock i mean even though with the vaccine coming out the healthcare sector is not doing too good but it is what it is let's go over the biggest winners for 
this account. So the biggest winners are Qualcomm, Apple, and Disney. Disney has been absolutely killing it in the streaming game. Like I said earlier, whoever owns streaming wins the communication sector. And basically, they are coming out hot with their streaming service. And all these others are looking pretty good. Let's go over the biggest losers. If you look at my biggest losers, all of these are REITs. All these REITs are getting spanked, they're getting demolished. That is okay because we are long-term investors and these will recover and we will make our money back. So yeah, that's it. The last thing I wanna talk about in this video is my new covered call strategy. Uh, approximately on the um, about the 18th, my twin brother came into town and he told me about this covered call strategy. And I just, I couldn't believe that he, like he was making like money just for holding stocks. I'm like, what? Like that sounds too good to be true. So then I kind of started looking into it and yeah you basically can make money for holding stocks like to being a long-term investor so all of this i have is the gray so that the, this is like the first couple weeks that i started so this is two weeks worth of um, income and that two weeks was about that much money and what i'm going to do is like i'm going to be tracking every single covered call option that i do and i'll be uh, tracking it all the way until december 31st so right now just from the uh, December 18th till the 8th was it's been three weeks. I made over $5,326 in premium. Um, I do have like a little formula here that I wrote out that um, kind of it's my formula to option harvesting. That's what I call this about getting option harvesting. At the end of the day, I'm a long term investor. And the way I do um, get these options is in a way that lines up with being a long term investor. I never want to stray away from that. I don't want to be increasing all this risk, but doing a covered call strategy minimizes the risk and allows you to acquire um, premium or acquire money for doing the exact same thing you're already doing, which is holding on for long term. Um, so I'll talk about this stuff here in a second, but like kind of like with my five uh, things for the formula to option harvesting is the first thing you got to do when picking um, a stock for like option harvesting or like doing covered call options is to stick with a high growth potential stock. For example, I noticed a beautiful trend in automotives. All cars are being switched to electric vehicles. The internal combustion engine will no longer be, and the electric vehicle will be the future. And to be, you wanna be on the right side of that. That is a growing industry. There's a huge market capitalization to doing that. So you wanna position yourself in a way that will capture that. With Tesla, I have a market leader, and with Neo, is one of the top EV companies in China and is backed by the Chinese government, and they are one of the number one EV markets in the world. So you want to pick a trend that is growing because if you don't pick a stock that is growing, then you can end up actually not doing well with covered calls. But if you pick something that is aggressively growing all the time, then you are going to be in a very good position to be acquiring lots of option premium. And the second thing about the formula to option uh, harvesting is you may need to use margin. There has been research saying that younger investors should be using margin to increase their portfolio. You know, ideally, you don't want to be using 100%, but 50% would be good. Over here on the side, um, I'm borrowing about, let, let, me, let me take a step back. So my total assets that I could actually use as collateral is $160,000. Even though I do have $227,000, this is not including my index investing or my Roth investing because I can't use that as collateral. But with all the shares of Tesla I have, I'm using that as collateral as well as Robinhood to option harvest. So basically I can borrow 92,000 some dollars and my the percent of margin I'm using is 58%. The end goal for this year is to keep acquiring margin and keep paying this off. So essentially like I've used all this margin now and hopefully in the next year, the share price of the stocks have all increased on top of me acquiring premium to pay this off. So essentially I'll have the uh, share price appreciation then with the option premium to pay $92,000 off. So essentially just from doing option premium, I could increase this by 92,000 plus whatever gain I get from owning the shares. So it's kind of an interesting way to increase your portfolio size. Um, and so that's the second thing. So you may have to use margin to um, 
get a little bit better gains to like rapidly accelerate your growth. The third thing is only stick with covered calls. Covered calls is like the safest way to do option investing. You have to own each one contract is a hundred shares of a stock. So the maximum you can lose is the amount of money that you paid for. So if you have a cost basis of like, say like $47, well, the only way you lose if you sell that. So ideally, if you can get a price that's a little bit higher than that for a call option, which I'll explain in a moment here, then like you are winning. But like, you know, the only thing you'd lose is like if you have a stock that is just dying and like it just keeps dropping and dropping, dropping that you're going to lose. That's why it's important to pick a really high growth stock. The fourth thing is never place a call at or under your cost basis. Very simple rule. And then number five, just sit back and just take in the option premium. So I just want to show an example of like exactly what I'm talking about here. So I own, this is my Robinhood account. So I own about 800 NEO shares. I bought NEO over here for about $47 per share. So that's basically my cost basis for every single share is $47. I would never place a covered call option at this or below it. If it's ever at, if the share price is at or below it, then I will not be putting call options. You always want it, the share price to be a little bit higher for you to make money. So like, for example, like say the share price is at 47, then you put your, your price over here. Cause ideally it can go up, but you never, if this is what you paid, you never want to just press here. If the share price is at like $39, that makes no sense because then like, you're going to be losing money on the sale. You don't ever lose money until you sell. If you pick a good company, a good growth company, it will come back. Sometimes stocks go down, but ultimately they will go back up if they are a good company. So if I paid $47 here, what I would probably be doing is I would want to pick a premium right here, which is a pretty nice premium, but also I get some sort of capital appreciation. So right now, this, so I paid this, what was it, $47? I mean, I pretty much can sell all over here. So say like I put it $52. This contract is $1.45. But if you own 100 shares, that's one contract. So what you would do is you'd multiply this by 100. So for one contract, you'd be paid out $145. If I had eight contracts, you do 145 times eight. And then if for whatever reason, if this gets assigned, well, then guess what? Like you have to sell it. But you'd be making a $5 um, in like, so you'd make $5 off every share times 800. So you'd be making this money plus the premium. Now, what I want to do is like, I'm a long-term investor. This is pretty close to what the share price is right now. So like if I paid $47, I'm actually not trying to sell it. I want to put it in a way where I can capture premium, but not have to sell it because I ideally want to hang on to these whole, uh, stocks for a long, like a long period of time. So minimum like 10 years. So like if I'm going to be hanging on to this for 10 years, like I really don't want to be selling the shares. If it does, then I have to be okay at selling it. So what I did for this last week is, you know, I paid $47 for it, but then I did the 60 call pretty far out of the money. It is Wednesday. I did this call on Monday. I actually got an average of 97 cents per contract, which was 97 times 800. So that came out to this one. Like, so whatever, something like this. So it was like 98 cents or 97 cents here. So, you know, you can see how much I got paid out for those. So, you know, if I had to sell, you know, I think at the start of the week, the, the share price was still at 50 bucks. It exploded to 55 and then it came back down today to 51. You know, if I like, you got to pick a price where like, you know what, if it hits this price, you are okay to sell. Like, is this enough profit for you? So you get this and then you get the premium. So to, to me, there's really no amount that you're going to really be losing. The only part that you lose is say you set it at 60, but then the share price increases to like 80. Well, you're losing the upside, but to me, that's not really a loss because you still you you still made money selling shares in the green and you made a premium now granted you didn't make that much money but it's still something better than nothing and you know ideally if you're looking out for like the investor presentations or any potential things coming up then like you could possibly push this higher and still keep acquiring the premium so for example for next week if you know say the stock price closes at 52 bucks 
I may just do the $60 call again and get this premium. But when doing covered calls, you have to go on to sell and a call and you have to own at least 100 shares to sell one contract. So this is my new strategy. We'll see how it goes out. We'll see how it goes. Um, but you know, kind of going back to this is like my total assets, that much money, I'm borrowing this much. Ideally over time, I keep getting this money and it keeps paying this down. I own the shares, the share price will go up. I'm basically getting this $92,000 for something I'm already doing, which is holding out the shares. And obviously what you want to do is like, you know, increment inc each week incrementally, if the stock's going up, then you just keep doing higher covered calls and you just kind of keep going up. And again, you're still holding the stock, which is long-term investing, but you're also getting a premium for doing exactly what you're already going to do. So those are my two cents. Um, that's all I'm really going to talk about in this video. If you guys can, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot. Um, hopefully these videos are helping you out, maybe motivate you to you know invest more money or look at different ways to make money. So hopefully you guys like the video. You guys take care and uh, you guys have a good one.